Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and today is Scale Day. We're going to talk about some of the basic things that I've found really useful as I developed as a pianist, practice tips, working with a metronome. Let's jump in. <laughs> If you've been watching this channel for a year or so now, you know I believe in instrumentality and in learning to play an instrument and as having that be part of your work as a musician. Learning to play is a complicated thing. And you know that scales are part of modes. And we've been talking about modes for the past month. Well, let's take a look at how I practice scales, how I learn to practice scales, and maybe talk a little bit about developing other skills as well. I'm at my keyboard. I use a weighted hammer action keyboard from Roland. I decided to do it here instead of over at the uh, piano because it's just awful noisy on the street today. Listen, when I'm practicing, I always use a metronome. So this metronome is set right now for 63 beats a minute. And if I'm going to play a scale, I'm going to start off trying to feel a relaxed arm like the weight dripping down into my fingers. And I'll try playing this scale. Let's play, a, let's play a G scale with one note for every beat. And if that goes well, I'll go to two notes for every beat, like an eighth note, and I'll do two octaves. You'll see why in a moment. When I got to the top, I got an accent on the highest note. Now, you probably figured out by now, the next thing would be three notes for every beat, that's a triplet, one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Here we go. And of course, you must have realized that when I got to the top, I did three octaves and I got that accent again. I'm trying to feel a tiny accent on each pulse. The metronome keeps me from speeding. I think that's probably the thing that I use it for the most. Gradually, if I get better at this, I'll increase the tempo. I guess ideally, I'm hoping to be able to do this, what I just played, at 120 to even more beats a minute. Well, when you're working on your scales, individual notes are important, but it's also really important to hear the sound of collections of tones. And maybe one of the most important collections of tones is just five or six notes together. And it's a kind of a dense sound, isn't it? If I do it up an octave. And my hand as a pianist should be ready to play all five of those notes at equal volume simultaneously. So again, I'll use the metronome to help me work on that. I'm going to hold this collection of notes down for four beats, feeling the weight of my arm supported by my fingers. And then I'll try the next four, um, five, sorry, the next five notes, 10 notes if I add them all up. I'm kind of thinking of dropping down into the keys rather than slapping or pushing. I'm lifting and dropping. It should feel kind of like you're dribbling a basketball. So I was at A. And if you look at the Chordy apps demonstration here, you can see that now I have to play a black key, the F sharp. And that tiny adjustment in my thumb and little finger is a really important technical challenge. And as I move my hand up, each finger has to make that adjustment. Eventually, I'll get smooth enough at this to play quarter notes just going up and down the scale. So. even tone between each of the 10 notes. They all happen at the same time. This is a very important 
important exercise. And I will just say that it's going to drive everybody in your house a little bit crazy. Do it in headphones. Don't slap the keyboard. Don't uh, push. Lift and drop. Feel the weight of your hand supported by your fingers. Lift and then move on to the next note. Don't move on to the next one until you can feel that sense of relaxation. Well, grouping is really, really important. And so I'm very interested in grouping patterns as well. Probably one of the great, greatest sort of keyboard um, sort of scale and pattern um, teachers was Charles Hannon, a French uh, pianist and uh, composer. And he gave us uh, patterns. Number one is this. As you can hear, it progresses up the keyboard by making a little skip and then coming down in steps. Now that was 16th notes. What if I did it in eighths? I really can feel now the weight of my hand. And I could go even further and do it in quarters. But what I'm wondering about is this. This is an eight note pattern, right? One E and a two E and a... What if I did it as a triplet? It would cross the bar line. This is really great for us. Let's try it. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You get the idea, right? Each finger takes an accent in a slightly different way. I was playing these exercises in the key of G. I recommend playing these exercises in all keys. And in order to do that, keep a book. Write down what you did today so that you'll know what to do tomorrow. Write down the tempo, the key, which exercises you did. Tomorrow, do something that's complementary. Move forward slowly. It's um, a process of gradually adding more and more. It's an accumulation of skills. And that accumulation provides a broad base for your musicianship. Every great composer has been an instrumentalist in one way or another, a singer, a pianist, a guitarist, oboe, clarinet, whatever it's been. Pick up your instrument and get better at it. It'll make you a better musician all the way across the board. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell. You'll be notified next time I do a video. I'll see you next time.